Welcome to the State Daily. Casey Porter here. So glad that you decided to tune in as we talk again in the week after a, another loss for the Cowboys at Baylor, their fifth loss in a row. 0-5 now in Big 12 play. Not a whole lot of positives to talk about as we bring in Coach Rainwater. Coach Rainwater, make it rain. Yeah, like you like you said, there's not a whole lot of positives. So I'm going to start with the one because um, I don't want that to get overshadowed. Um, I don't think this particular individual has got the credit he has earned um, for being a staple in this football team, and that's Brennan Presley and how mm-hmm. impressive he has been um, consistently throughout the season. And not just – um, to me, not just um, on the field playing, but his attitude towards the game. And and you wouldn't know by looking at him the frustrations that are going out on. And, and he's just – he's going out there and, and, and just a complete gamer, right? And going out there and, and playing hard every play. And, um, you know, it's been very impressive to watch him um, get his, you know, and coming back um, for this – for this season and, and that sort of thing. So don't want that to be overshadowed with the rest of the negatives that I'm sure we'll be talking about, but just how impressive he has been all season long and, and the yeah. quality of person that he obviously is. No doubt about that. Hey, Coach, if you're in the coaching industry long enough, it's not that you start – start. it's not like you ever stop trying to fix the problems or, or try to make things better, but there just are sometimes years to where at the end of the year, you're just like, damn, I'm glad that year's over, right? Yeah. Is that where we're at with this year, or is there still something to get out of here? Uh, <laughs> I think there's something to get out of this year. I just don't know that we're going to get it. You know, right. um, it just – going back to what we've talked about and, and, you know, last week against BYU having, you know – having the discussion about there was obvious changes made and it was a completely looking different looking football team. And to the point where the commentators on TV were talking about how this looks like a totally different football team to one week later. And the statement that is being made by commentators and analysts is maybe the most disappointing football team in college football this year. Right. And it's like we made strides and we've said this in previous podcasts too. It's like we take one step forward then take two steps back. You know, and I felt like we took a step forward against BYU and the different game planning and different play calling and and that sort of stuff. And then this week was two steps back. And I just don't know. I I think that I think the talent's there. I think that, um, you know, this could be a quality football team. I just don't know that we're going to get it. You know, yeah. for whatever reason, and you know, we can speculate. We're not inside the coach's office or at practice and that sort of thing. We can we can only speculate based on what we see on Saturdays. Um, but you know, back to that kind of hopeless feeling that we talked about a couple of podcasts about ago about. But I just don't know that we're going to get it out of this. You know, this team this year uh, for whatever reason. So anyway, um, the, I guess the answer to your question is twofold. Is yeah, I think there is something to get out of this team more and something to look forward to. I just know, I just don't think it's going to be there. I know how competitive you are. I've been in a dugout and I've been in, I've been on the sideline in a press box, football press box with Robbie Rainwater. I know the competitiveness that comes out of you in these kind of moments. So yeah. let me give you two options. Of course, the best option would be you go youth, you play all your young guys setting up for next year and then you end up winning your last four games are looking great and people are excited about all the young guys right that's your best option not not the most likely option obviously so let me give you these two options a is you play all your older guys you keep playing alan bowman at quarterback you win just enough games to make a bowl game option a is that or option b is you go nuclear you play malalake smith you play rodney fields every down at running back you pin all of your all of your your young Defensive players go with an entirely different offensive line full of young guys, young receivers, young everything. You don't want another game. Robbie Rainwater and his competitive element as an Oklahoma State fan, which one do you choose? I choose the option that gives us the best opportunity to put the kids on the field that are going to compete every down. Okay? Winning and losing is a byproduct. Yes. Right? It's a byproduct of the effort down by down, right? Mm-hmm. And the only re- the way you're, you're going to win, right, is if you give yourself the best opportunity to win by putting the 
the highest percentage of kids on the field that are going to compete down to down by down. I don't care how old they are. I don't care about anything else. What I care about is their competitive level on every snap. And I'm sick and I'm, I'm Brennan Presley is the only name that I'm going to bring up because it's a positive. I'm sick of seeing um, three year veterans or four year veterans that can't tackle. I'm sick of seeing or fit them, the right gap, fit the right gap, or they're in the right gap and they just completely whiff with no yeah. effort. Yeah. Right. Um, or they're out of position because a lack of effort. Um, at this point in the season, um, you've got to put kids on the field that's going to give you the best opportunity to win. And I think for five games in a row now, we've seen that the the we're not putting the best option on the field that's going to give us the best chance to win, in my opinion. In my opinion, because we're not winning, right? And even if you do do that, you're going to have losses, right? right? Going undefeated is is rare, and we all know that. And you're going to have losses throughout the season, but not to this level, right? right. Not to the level of the number of yards that you're giving up um, on defense, the amount of points you're giving up on defense, and the lack of run game production, even though you've shown that you you have the ability to do it against BYU, Right. Sure. And that, and course. how many rushing yards did Bowman have against BYU because the game plan was to in, include a quarterback run? Sure. And then we just completely go away from it. Right. Right. There's and there's, then rush for sixty whatever yards, seventy four yeah. yards or whatever it is. Yards. Right. Um, the gl- the one glaring stat I always look at a you know you know me I always look for what's the one yeah. glaring stat from um, the previous game whether it's baseball or football whatever it is the telling stat the telling stat to me. Okay, based on things that we've talked about in previous podcasts about, you know, if the one lone defender that's nearest to the ball doesn't make the tackle, it seems like it's there's not going to be a tackle. Right. Right. Here's the most glaring stat. If you ask me defensively, regardless, if we're giving up 370 yards rushing or whatever it is and and all that kind of stuff, how many assist tackles do you think that OSU had Saturday? Oh, wow. So I have when, no, you're, or I could when, not you're even. Talk, when you're talking about swarming to the football, right? Yeah. When you're talking about somebody hanging on until somebody else arrives to clean up the pile, when you're talking about gang tackling, right? You should have infinite amount of very few uh, solo tackles on the day. Should have a lot of assist tackles. Yeah. Last Saturday or this last Saturday, um, there was four. Four assisted tackles the whole day. Four assist tackles. Four. The whole day? The whole day. The entire game. Okay. Out of the fifty eight plays that wow. um, crap, I'm so I'm so fired up right now, I can't remember who we played. But who but um <laughs> doesn't matter at this point, Baylor. Doesn't matter, right? <laughs> Baylor, right? We're playing ourselves at this the point. That's 58 the fifty-eight plays yeah. that Baylor ran, we had four assist tackles. Okay. That tells me all I need to know about the effort level of the defense. Versus missed tackles. Versus, yeah, we've got three times as many missed tackles as we do assist tackles. Well, we've had that many missed tackles as seeming like in one play. Right. Yeah, you know, and so th- that is very glaring to me and kind of corroborates the, some of the things that we've talked about in previous podcasts about the tackling issues with OSU and not swarming to the football and not just doing your part to sink your hips, get your head across, wrap up, and hold yeah. on for dear life until somebody else gets there. Now yeah. I'm starting to figure out why. Yeah. Nobody else is going to get there. Yeah, right. You know, Absolutely. and um and I I don't know is that a is that a coaching issue? Is that a um right. is that an effort issue on the part? But here's what I'm going to go back to. And I use this statement whether I'm on this podcast or if I'm talking to a staff that I have um professionally is you know, I'm not a book reader. You know, I don't read books. I don't read novels. I read all the time, but I'm not reading a novel sure. because the mere fact that if the novel's good enough to read, they're going to make a movie about it, and I'd rather just yeah. go watch the movie, you know, that type of deal. But the one book that I have read in my life was Swing Your Sword by Mike Leach, right? And the one thing that he talks about in there constantly is either you're coaching it or you're allowing it to happen, right? So if you're not coaching missed tackles, if you're not coaching um, th- um, solo tackles, if you're not coaching the idea to not gain tackle, right, then you're allowing it to happen by continuing to put those same people on the field. Right. Okay. So at the end of the day, regardless if it's an effort level, whether it's a scheme issue, whether it's, um, or it's an injury issue, right? It doesn't matter if Colin Oliver is in the game and, 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 and Nick Martin and those guys that have been out 
um, an injury plague. It doesn't matter if they're playing or not. That does not stop the idea of swarm to the football. Right. Right. And if we're not coaching that, which I hope to God that we're not coaching, don't swarm to the football. Right. Yeah. If we're not coaching that, then you're allowing it to happen by not addressing it and continuing to play the same people that refuse to swarm tackle and gang tackle and go clean up a mess when your buddy's out there hanging on for dear life, waiting for you to arrive. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, Okay, and this is going to kind of answer one of your previous questions about, you know, what option are you going to take, play the young guys, whatever. Start playing kids that want to get to the football. Yeah. Right? How many times have you seen in high school football or middle school football or even little league where one of your drills is chop your feet and the coach is going to roll the football over and everybody run to the football? Yeah, right. Right? Well, maybe we need to start instituting some of those drills because it's very obvious that gang tackling and swarm to the football is not a philosophy that is taking place right now. So either you're coaching it or you're allowing it to happen. Okay. Either way, it's on the coaching staff to get it fixed. And up to this point, they're not willing to fix it. They're willing to keep putting people out there because either they're a veteran or, I mean, I just can't imagine with all those guys on the sideline that we don't have anybody that we can throw in there that would give at least a better effort to hang on to a shoestring until somebody else shows up to clean up the file. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that's the glaring stat for me is um, throughout the entire football game and the 58 plays or whatever it was that Baylor ran, um, we had four assist tackles. Yeah, that's crazy. It's awful. You know, yeah. and, and this is a metric where, you know, all the things that we've talked about with the offensive side saying, you know, they've, you know, they've only – the time of possession has been grossly in favor of the opponent and all those type of things. This week it was the reverse. We still get beat by 10 points and we had the ball more than they did. Yeah. Right. You know, which tells you two things is a we're, we're doing better managing the game from a standpoint of game management um, clockwise, but also the, the opponent's offense is scoring very quickly and easily because they can beat us by 10 points and have the ball 10 minutes less than we do throughout yeah. the game. Um, so anyway, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably jumbling up my words right now nope. because it's just so it's, – it's so stinking frustrated, yeah. frustrating that, you know, on a high school level, um, high school coaches don't allow this to happen. Yeah. High school coaches. And, and they only have a limited amount of players. I mean, and I, and we, we're not recruiting. Mean, well, some are. I shouldn't say we're not recruiting. Yeah. Some people are recruiting. But, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we're, we're taking freshmen through seniors that live in our district and piecing together, right, a defense or an offense and scheming that in a way that best fits the skill set of that particular group that we have that year. Right. And we don't allow, I shouldn't say weeks, I don't coach anymore, but high school level coaches don't allow this stuff to happen. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So it's very baffling, very baffling, very frustrating because it doesn't seem like, uh, are they even aware? Yeah. Right. Are they aware? If they're aware of it, then there's a f- refusal to change. If Do what it takes to fix if it. They're, if, they're, if they're aware of it, then there's a refusal to put the best product on the field based on who's going to give us the best effort play by play, right? Mm-hmm. If the other option is they're not aware of it, then it's a gross incompetence. Yeah. Take which one you want. Yeah, absolutely. Take and Coach Gundy kind of let the cat out of the bag with his comment that he thinks that some kids need to watch the film. They need to be honest with themselves, and they need to self-evaluate and, and do some soul-searching. So, I mean, he kind of – he's saying the same thing you did in different words right there. So, that tells you right there that your head coach is making the statement that he's looking for those guys moving forward that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, at this point in time, to me, the wins and losses isn't as important to me right now as it is of seeing guys compete. Yes. Right. And there's just too many plays where there's a lack of effort, in my opinion, that guys are out of position because of lack of effort. Yeah. The tackling continues to be an issue because there's like, there was one play at the end of the game where, you know, everybody in the world knew that Baylor was going to run because it was in the, the game. We're trying to get the ball back down, you know, and, and potentially try and make a game of it again at the end. And they just, we, I think it was, um, well, I said I wasn't going to say names. We have one guy that, um, meets the guy 
line of scrimmage or for a one yard gain or whatever, and he's trying to strip the ball. And there's three guys, three OSU players standing around just watching it happen. Yeah. And then the first guy, guy first guy strips, everybody else cleans up, right? Yeah. And this and in this situation, it was one guy that makes initial contact, and there's literally three guys standing from me to the microphone that I'm speaking into right now and never lay a hand on the guy. They just stand there and watch. And then the guy breaks the tackle and runs for a touchdown. It's just lack of effort, you know, and going back to how do you not see, if I can see that live on the game, how do you not see that in film and go, you know what? Competition, competition breeds success. Competition breeds a better product. And we're going to create some competition by you sitting over there and watching Mm -hmm. somebody else do it. We talk about that with Josh Holiday all the time. How do you, That's the one thing he does great. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He creates competitions yeah. within the team. You can't get comfortable. Yeah, we had a grand <laughs> slam against OU yeah. at O'Bright Stadium and a kid that hadn't played in two months. Yeah. And he right. got inserted to pinch hit, right? Yes. Here's your right. competition. Yeah. Not it. I mean, it's just – it's amazing to me. It's amazing. I don't know if we're worried about hurting feelings. I don't know if we're, you know – if we just don't have anybody else to put in, I mean, is it the Bobby Knight situation where a kid's either way up? that's coaching because you need to recruit better? That whatever it is, right? Whatever it is, but to me, there's Bobby no Knight. excuse, regardless of who's on the field, for having four assist tackles, and that's coming off OSU stats. That's not yeah. stats from Google or anything. That's on the box score from OSU's website. Four yep. assist tackles. So put two different hats on. You, you've worn both of these: uh, the the diehard fan hat and then the coach hat. You, yeah. You've worn both. Which ones matter right now? Which ones matter? Yeah, which one's more upset with the brand of football we're playing? The diehard fan or the coach in Robbie Rainwater? My gosh, I, I would have to get in a fight with myself and see who came out on the winning side. I mean, I don't know. How, I mean, it's not It's it's not as hard to kick my own tail as it used to be because I'm a little yeah. bit older and out of shape and all that kind of stuff. My gosh, as a fan or as a coach? I, I would say as a coach. Yeah. As a former coach. Yeah. Because – of the insistence to not make a change where one has been needed at multiple positions for multiple weeks and nothing's getting better. The effort level is not there. The effort level is not changing. And it's almost like it's not changing because they know they're not going to be replaced. And that's what's frustrating to me is, you know, Robbie Rainwater, whether it's in the coaching world or one as a former athlete or as, you know, um, you know, professionally as a head of an organization or whatever the case is, if I'm putting my name on something, it, Casey, it doesn't, it, coach, it doesn't, I just called you Casey. We've always I, promised that we wouldn't do that. I apologize. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter if it's a football game, baseball game, or a school report card. Right. If the scoreboard is on, and we've talked about this, if the scoreboard is on, we're going to compete. Absolutely. And even in my professional career where that scoreboard is a school report card that blasts your grades, that is your scoreboard as your organization. And if you're going to stamp my name on it, then by God, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that that's done, that that looks good. Right. Right. Even if we don't agree with it, doesn't matter. Right. That's the metric. That's the scoreboard. My name's going to be attached to it. And here's how we're going to do it. And we're going to make sure that we're doing it right. We may not succeed. We may not win this game. Right. We may take a couple losses, but it's not because of lack of effort. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and the physicality isn't there, you know, uh, high school coaches always talk about play fast, play physical. No, it's not there. Yeah. And, and and if I was the coach, as the coach, and me to answer your question, the coach is more frustrated because, dadgummit, your name is being stamped to it. Yeah, right. Right, Your name is being stamped. Ryan this, Nardo's name is getting drugged through the mud right now. Yeah, your name is being stamped to the product that you're, that you're uh, producing, right? Your name is being stamped to the effort level that your kids are producing. And either it's because you're, you're, you're not practicing physicality or it's not a – um, driving home point every practice and before every game of that we're going to be, you know, we may get out athleted, but we're going to, you know, it kind of goes back to the adage of, you know, somebody that says they've never had their butt kicked. They haven't been in very many fights. Yeah. Right. right. Anybody that says, well, yeah, I've never if you been say beat you've up. never made an error, then you, you haven't played enough baseball. Right. Anybody that says I haven't, I've never been beat up. We haven't been very many fights. I've been beat yeah. up before. Right. Yeah. You know, um, um, but it's, it's just, I don't know. I, I can't get over the seemingly lack of effort and the interest level 
when it was so much different last week against BYU, right? Yeah, maybe not, right. My, maybe not extremely different on the defensive side, but it seemed like there was just a lack of interest and lack of effort across the board defensively. And there was too many times in that game where a tackle could have been made and there was not an effort there. Yeah. Or, you know, a guy was out of position because he wasn't going hard or right. whatever the case is. And, you know, you're never going to fix that if you continue to allow it to happen. Yep. Either that or you're coaching it. And I just yep. can't I, – I can't get to a place that anybody would coach that. But regardless of your coaching or allowing it to happen, you're the – you were just as complicit in um, the product mm -hmm. by allowing it to happen and not making it. I think f from a fan standpoint, it would be very refreshing, regardless of the wins or losses, if I at least see the effort in somebody else being put in there that would give a better effort. May not yep. be as athletic, right? Um, may not be dynamic in the play make the play he makes, um, but just the effort level. Um, would change a lot for the perception of um, what um, this product currently is. So play psychologist to my bipolar brain here. Uh, at, at, you know, in one part of my brain, one part of my bipolar brain, I'm like, man, this has been a great year of, of Cowboy football. We had the Big 12 coach of the year last year. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wanting to defend everything because I'm like, well, man, this is all knee-jerk. It, it wasn't that long ago that we were winning all these games. Everything was great. And then the other side of my brain, I'm just like, this is pitiful football. I mean, I'm just so angry with it. So how, how, how do you play psychologist to somebody like me who has who just from mood to mood, you kind of go bipolar in terms of wanting to defend Gundy because he's been great. He was great last year. He's been great throughout this season. And then to also just kind of dive off the deep end about this year. So <clears throat> what you're saying is the really the crossroads that all fans of OSU have. Yeah, how that's could where we I'm have, at. How could we have the product that we had last year, right? Uh, one win away from the college football playoff, if you yeah. win the Big 12 championship. You have the Big 12 coach of the year, right? Um, you make a huge turnaround after game four or whatever it is, and then have what you have now. So here's my thought. What's the biggest change – in OSU this year versus last year, okay? The answer to that is not the players, not the coaches. The biggest change is, since how this is a psychology question, right? Yes. The biggest change in OSU football this year is no different than the biggest change in every other FBS team across the board. And that is the institution of the coach-to-player communication and tablets. Yeah. Right? Are we behind the eight ball? Are we in our quarterback's ear so much that he can't perform? Yeah. Right. Are we saying so much to him 15 seconds before the snap that it's paralysis by analysis? Right. Right? Are we saying so much to him that 15 seconds before the snap that half of it ends up being wrong? Right? Why is Alan Bowman not performing to the same level that he did last year. What's the only change? The only change isn't the running back. The only the change Schedule isn't the receivers. The, ch the change isn't the offensive lineman. The biggest change is he's got somebody in his ear. Yeah. All the way 15 seconds point. before snap. Okay. Is that affecting the production of the offense? Same thing on the defensive side, right? For anybody that doesn't understand it, just look for the guy that's got the green sticker on his hat. Right. Yeah. That tells you who's got the headset or whatever it is inside of his helmet that somebody's talking to him all the way up to 15 seconds before the snap. Are kids playing um, in a sense of football that is not reactionary? Right. Right. Are they are they are they so mind screwed right now? Right. Because they're trying to perform and they've got somebody in their ear to the point where they can't react and they can't just go play. They can't go be an athlete. Right. Um that to me would be interesting to know, which we never will, yeah, right? right? But how effective or ineffective, or has that been a problem with this team that has hindered the progress because yeah. we have too much communication from the box to the quarterback or from the box to the yeah. defender that's wearing that headset? And then the tablets, are we using the tablets effectively? I can remember I was still coaching when um, 
you know, high school started using the tablets, yeah, right? right? And that's a transition period, right? You've got to be very careful to make sure that you're not trying to analyze what happened wrong on the last play, instead trying to get the next play in, right? Sure, absolutely. And, and it goes back to the paralysis by analysis. Are we spending so much time trying to figure out why the last play didn't work that we're not effectively communicating to the quarterback through the coach to player communication. And then what we do communicate isn't as effective because we're spending so much time on the tablet. Right. Right. Those are the two changes to me that would be very interesting if we had any knowledge of how that's working, if that's been a hindrance to OSU football. Yep. Right. And some would say, well, everybody, so other people are having success with it, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, but everybody's different. Right. Everybody institutes it differently. Some may not be using it as much. Um, I think you can have 18 tablets. How many of them are on the field versus the press box? How many guys is our offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator? How much time are they spending looking on the tablet on previous plays and not getting the correct call in next? Mm -hmm. um, those are all things that can drastically affect the effectiveness of either side of the football. And, um, Anyway, that's the psych. Uh, the I don't remember exactly your question. It was re re regards to psychology, but that to me is, I think, could be some of the reason for the ineffectiveness or even lack of effort or things like that is that they're so mind boggled right now mm -hmm. because yeah. it's paralysis by analysis. There's too much communication, and they're not going out there and just being an athlete and reacting and making play. Yep. That's a good. That's a good observation. I never even thought about that. But hey, we got about a minute and a half left here, Coach. This has yeah. been another great show. This is very therapeutic for me. I love listening to you talk about these things. It always makes me feel better. Final thoughts? Yeah. I, well, I mean, I guess <clears throat> to sum up what we've talked about and um, for multiple podcasts now is, I think that this could still be a quality football team. I just don't know that. We're going to get there, and there's not anything from this past weekend that would lead you to believe that, you know, um, we're headed that way. We're headed that way, and yeah. you know, we had the problems against BYU with tackling and everything, and that was coming out of a bye week. Why would we think that it would improve when we don't have a bye week? So, um, very frustrating. Um, you know, still going to watch games, still going to show up to games, and all that sort of thing, and, and hopefully. Um, what I would like to see moving forward, forget everything that we've talked about in the past about changes being made. I mean, you know, it goes back to what we said, either make a change or you be the change. And I think that goes down to the players as well, right? Either show more effort or we're going to put somebody in that's going to at least show effort ever play. You know, um, that's where, where I'm at with it. Um, still going to be a diehard OSU guy. Still going to be a little and true to the university, mainly because I'm paying tuition and fees and everything else with my daughter. But still going to go uh, to the games. Still going to go to the games. Still going to wear my OSU shirt like I got on sure. today, and and um, still be an OSU fan. But man, it's frustrating. And and just um, if nothing else, I hope anybody that would listen would realize that either you're coaching it or allowing it to happen. And by God, you need to stop allowing it to happen so people don't speculate that you're coaching it.